think this is largely posturing. The Fed is hoping it might get lucky and the inflation will work itself out. But we're going to go through another two meetings of the FOMC where they are still stimulating, engaging in quantitative easing to some extent while keeping rates at zero. And so I just think that um, the Fed is very good at hedging its bets. And it felt like it had to sound hawkish. But in fact, the actions are still stimulating at a time when we're seeing this tremendous energy. The economy wants to recover, but the Fed is still babying it. Would you say that the, the stock market is correctly uh, anticipating a, an effective landing, an effective soft landing? Or would you say that the, the stock market is near term feeling good about the continued uh, accommodation? And, and, and when would it finally come to grips with the notion that maybe we're behind or maybe inflation is going to be tougher to deal with because it's already uh, the toothpaste is already out of the tube. Is, is that coming down the road? We haven't seen it yet with the stock market. I, I think that um, a lot of people in the market are thinking make hay while the sun shines. The Fed made it clear they're not even going to raise rates until they finish the taper. So they've got at least through the end of March. I think if they start to raise rates using this very blunt tool of the rate that the Fed pays to commercial banks, depository institutions who keep reserves on deposit at the Fed, that's the administered rate. If they just ratchet that up by dictat, because that has nothing to do with engaging with market demand and supply, if they use that tool, that's when you're going to get the attention of stock market participants. because. I think there might be a lot of um, stock market activity financed by margin loans, and that would be very sensitive to an increase by the Fed. I think this is a time for Fed officials to stand back and say, why would we use that tool? That is, you already have $4.3 trillion in these reserves just sitting there collecting 15 basis points at the Fed, doing nothing. If the Fed proceeds raising that rate three times and we do get to the 0.9% by the end of next year, you're going to be paying banks six times more to keep that money sitting stagnant. Now, what does that do to increase supply? What does that do to expand production? How does that really fight inflation? That's not really a good tool. Steve uh, Leisman earlier, he, he did address some of these things when, when he uh, actually asked Chairman Powell his question. And, and that was the, the pace seems to be very um, sort of thoughtful and, and slow and gradual. And, and the chairman had a, re had a response to that, that, that that's the way you need to, to sort of steer the ship as uh, chairman of the Fed. That, that, for example, if he had done everything you wanted to do, Judy, what, what, have the, what would the near-term impact have been uh, on the stock market, on the bond market? And, and should you take the near-term pain now and take your medicine? Or, or do, do you think that as you space it out and do things methodically and, and let the market know along the way what you're doing, isn't it possible that is the right way to do it? That was, his, that was the case he made. Well, I think that Chair Powell is exquisitely sensitive, not just to uh, political sentiments, but also the market. So he believes in not surprising the market. He creates expectations, and then he meets them precisely. And so the market tends to appreciate that. But what happens if the Fed starts with the first interest rate hike, and it doesn't affect inflation? What if inflation is every bit as high or even higher? So they do the next one. So they do the next one. And now you're in a situation where the Fed is ratcheting up into a tight monetary policy, relatively, that could create not just market turmoil, but financial instability with so much debt out there and much of it very sensitive to a change in the interest rate. I think he's risking that. I would much rather see the Fed shrink the balance sheet than to use this very blunt instrument of paying banks more on their deposits.